you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, if you find your way over to the Gospel of John, surprise, surprise. We're gonna we're we're in the Gospel of John. We're gonna skip out a little bit though, and and uh, find your way over to chapter twelve. The Gospel of John, chapter twelve. In verse twelve, starting in verse twelve, and we're gonna look uh, as uh, we talk about Palm Sunday. And uh, as you find your way over there, real quick, I'm gonna just I want to mention something to you. Uh, there was an insert in your bulletin this morning. Uh, you know, I would. Uh, you know, it's amazing how God works. Uh, so, uh, I'd love to tell you that this was in there because we thought ahead and it was all planned and everything was just perfect the way it was supposed to be. But this past week, there was a lot going on. And me and Gene, we worked on the bulletin, man. We had everything ready Thursday morning, printing that thing out. And all of a sudden, I realized on Saturday afternoon, you know what? We didn't put a single thing in the bulletin about sunrise service for Easter. So uh, we come up yesterday evening, and Debbie, Debbie, I would say Debbie helped me, but I just kind of sit and read a book. She done that. She, she did this. Uh, so I'd love to tell you it was on purpose, but I guess it was. It was God's way. So this is in the bulletin. So he, here's what we can do with this, okay? Uh, so everybody knows about sunrise service. It's going to be at 6.45 a.m. next Sunday morning. Uh, by the way, there's a sheet at the front up there. If you're going to come, how about just make a, put your name on there so we can sort of get a count of how many we might have. If you, if you can, if you can't, that ain't no big deal either. And if you, if you sign it and you can't come, that's all right. We're just trying to figure out how to kind of prepare a little bit. So take this with you. And don't just leave it stuck in your Bible or throw it in the trash can or leave it on the pew. I'm going to walk around and look. I'm, a, I'm watching where everybody's sitting, okay? And, and if I see this sitting on the pew, I'm going to call you. <laughs> but look, take, take this with you. Walk across the street. Share it with a neighbor. Give it, give it to your neighbor uh, or a, a friend, uh, somebody that you know, somebody at your work, and, and just invite them to come and and be part of our service on, on sunrise Sunday, okay? Because we do we we do need to remember what Christ did for us. We need to share that. So you know, while it was a mistake that I forgot to put that in there, it certainly was a mistake that uh, this was separate and it would be easy for you to take and share with someone. So if you would do that, that would be great. We look forward to next Sunday. We look forward to next Sunday morning and a time of watching God work time of fellowship together. So I would encourage you, uh, grab somebody that you not seen in a while uh, and, and, and call them. Give them a call. Let them know about, uh, about Sunrise Service uh, next Sunday. And, and I hope we'll, we'll fill up the balcony and we'll put out some more chairs. We'll do whatever we need to do to hold them all. Okay. All right. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, looking at verse 12, it says, The next day a multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it, was writ as it is written. And verse 15 says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. And the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask this morning that you would just uh, look over this time this morning. Look over us this morning. Lord, as we open your word, Lord, I ask that you would open our hearts and our minds. 
And Father, I pray that you would give me clarity of thought and speech, that your word would go out of hindered from this place. And Lord, I ask that you bind Satan and set him outside, and he'd have nothing to do here this morning. And Lord, that you would have your way with us in this very time, in this very moment, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. And Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So 4,000 years ago, the, the Jewish people had, had been looking for, for a Messiah. And, and for, I said 4,000, but 4,000 of years they had been looking for the Messiah. Uh, they were expecting, what were they expecting? They were expecting a, a great military leader, a, 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 a leader, a strong, powerful leader, one who would overthrow all of their enemies and, and they would restore Israel to, a, to its former greatness and, and glory. And, and what, what they had not expected was a king that would appear as a carpenter. A, a lowly carpenter, someone who, who made his livelihood with his, with his hands and, 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 and not in not an order, not in government, not in uh, them, but if they were looking for that military person, not a carpenter. Throughout the life of Jesus, they, they were given evidence of his entire life, from, from his birth, from before his birth, and, and, and all throughout his entire life and through his entire ministry, they were given evidence on top of evidence of who Jesus was and who he said he was. He, he proved his identity time and time again in his, in his lifetime with his miracles and with his bloodline. Bloodline was a, was, a, was a great deal back then in those days, who your father was and his father was and, and all things. And, it, and he proved who he was by his bloodline and by his birth and the, and the place of his birth and how he was born and all of the things that surrounded that and, and by the signs and the wonders that he showed as he was here and lived and worked among his people. And yet they refused to believe that he was in fact the Messiah. But time and time again he showed. But John chapter 1 and verse 11 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. So in this 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus is once again revealing his identity to the, to the nation of Israel, to the people of Israel. He, he, he's, he's given them an opportunity to, to see who he is. And uh, they'll be given one final chance to receive their king. He came as a king, but they did not receive him as a king. This chapter records the details of the last days of Christ, public ministry. And it paints a portrait of Jesus, the king. And Jesus clearly proved his identity by fulfilling Zechariah's prophecy. Did you notice that in verse 15? As we were reading, it says, in verse 15, it says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. And then if we were to look back in Zechariah chapter 9, in verse 9, it says, Rightly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Israel, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just in having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. A colt, the foal of a donkey. So can you imagine? Oh, Jesus the King. Can you imagine on that Palm Sunday when he came riding in and he was riding in on a donkey? What, what do you think the what do you think the Roman soldiers and the, the Roman governor and and all of the dignitaries of Rome that were that were in the city. What do you what do you kind of think? Oh man, <laughs> look at that king. They probably thought it was a joke. They thought it was funny. They thought that, that, that it meant nothing. Jesus was no threat. Even his own disciples didn't really understand all that was going on, all that they were seeing, all that they were witnessing. Verse 16. And our scripture this morning says his disciples did not understand these things at first. Jesus presented himself just as the prophets had said he would. Just as the prophet said that he would, he came as a king. Exactly as scripture had, had told that it would, would happen. Jesus made his ride in Jerusalem 
of what would be what we would be calling Palm Sunday, what we celebrate uh, today, Palm Sunday. Just a few days before his death and exactly one week before his resurrection. The people who saw Jesus in the city, what did they do? They cried out, they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Just a short time ago, they saw Jesus standing at the tomb of Lazarus. And they watched him in his authority and his power as he spoke to Lazarus. He called Lazarus out of that tomb. And Lazarus walked out, still covered in the rags of a grave. And they watched and they saw and they saw this one speak with authority to the dead and the dead got up. And, and, and I know I've, I've said this before, but it amazes me every time I think about it. He called Lazarus by name because if he had said all that is dead, get up, everything that was dead that was in the, in the, in the, in the close to his voice that could hear his voice would have got up and shook off the dust of the grave and come to him. He called Lazarus. And Lazarus got up and he came to him. And said, so these people saw that and they said, oh, for sure, this must be the one who's going to overthrow this government. This must be the one who's going to take our enemy and finally put them in their place. You see, these people were looking for a ruler. They were looking for somebody to be in charge. They were looking for a soldier, a, a leader, a military person. In just five days, some of those who had shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. They would join their voices with those crying, Crucify. 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 While they expected him to come as a king, they, they always knew that. They always expected that he would come as a king. That was no surprise. Never expected him to die on the cross. They never expected him to die. Let's look just a little bit farther in our verse this morning. We didn't read this, but let's look at this real quick together. Let's look at verse 27. And then we're going to jump down and look at verses 32 and 33. First John chapter 12, verse 27 says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. And then in verse 32 it says, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. And verse 33 says, This he said, signifying, signifying by what death he would die. That lifting up from the earth, that he would be nailed to a cross and lifted up on that cross. That's the death that he was talking about. Death on a cross. These verses paint a clear picture of why Jesus came into the world. Why did Jesus come into this world? He came into this world to die. His ministry here it was not about preaching. It wasn't about all the miracles. It wasn't about the disciples. It wasn't about all the, the good things that he did. His entire life was centered around the day that he would walk up Calvary's hill and be nailed to a cross. His entire purpose in living was to die on that cross. Jesus stood before Pilate in John chapter 18 and verse 37. And it says, Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. came to die on that cross for us. So what, what if uh, what, what if the Jews of the day and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and, and all that were gathered, the Gentiles and Jews, 
What if on that day they would have accepted Christ as King? They would have accepted Jesus as King. If they'd have done that, would, would Jesus still have had to die on the cross? Would he have still had to go to Calvary? Would the cross still have to have taken place? Would, would all, all of those things had to take place? We need to know this morning, had he not shed his blood, had he not died, there would have been no, there would have been no remission for sin. There would have been no redeeming work. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Had he not died, there would have been no salvation possible for any man. Any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, there would have been no salvation for us. Had the Jews, had the Jews received Jesus as their king, would he have had to go to Calvary? Yes, he would have gone to Calvary. Why did he have to go to Calvary? Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8 says, All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus came to this world for the one purpose, the one purpose of dying for your sins and for my sins because, because, because he loved us. That's why he did what he did. For he loved us so much. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his love, his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, yes, he would have gone to the cross. He would have gone to the cross. They rejected Jesus. They rejected his message. They rejected his ministry. They rejected his miracles. And they rejected him. And many are still doing that today. It hasn't changed. There are many that still reject him today. They hear the gospel and they and then they say, Well, I won't have any man to rule over my life. I don't know what an excuse might be, but, but, but we, don't, we don't want to humble ourselves and, and know that there's something greater than we are, uh, more capable, stronger, bigger. We, we, would, we, we just don't want to accept that message of who Christ is. When we do this, when the world does this, they're rejecting the only hope that they have for salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the, the way, the truth, and the life, and no one cometh unto the Father but by Him. I want you to, I want you to think about what I'm getting ready to, to share with you. Jesus Christ you can reject him if you want to. But when you do, when you do, remember that you are rejecting heaven, salvation, hope, and life. Isn't that a little bit harder to get around? Man, it's easy to kind of Push a name off of Jesus. But to reject heaven, salvation, hope, and life. And look, he, he, here's another part of that. So, so with that rejection, what are you doing? You're embracing. You're embracing. You're, you're grabbing hold of. You're grabbing hold of him. Grabbing hold of damnation. You're grabbing hold of despair and death and eternal torment. So the choice is yours. The choice is yours this morning. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 says, 
So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as he as he was a cut as he and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In verse 20 it says that then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and said, I am. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he, had began, and he began, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Clearly, clearly, without any doubt, without a lot of big words or, or, or complicated things, Jesus clearly proves himself to be the Messiah. Yet the people refuse to hear. They refuse to hear and to see the truth of who he was and what he was. And you see, this is still happening today. It ain't changed. It's still happening today. We're surrounded by those who are hearing the truth and they're, and, and they're seeing the truth lived out in the people of God and in, 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 those, in the saints and in, in those who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. They, they, they're seeing that lived out and that's why it's so important that we, we have to live that out. We can't, we can't live our Christian life here in the church walls, but we have to live it out in the world so that people can see this truth the Jews, the Jews of that day, all of that day, the Jews, they can say what they want to say. That doesn't change the fact that Jesus Christ is King. Men today can do what they please. They can live how they want to live, but it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. Jesus Christ is still the King. Folks can live as they please. They can, they, they, people just do what they want to do. and They can do what they want to do, but it's never, ever going to change the fact that Jesus Christ is King. The only question that remains this morning is this. Is Jesus your Lord? Is Jesus your King? Is Jesus your King? I hope that you can say yes to that. I hope that's, that's your answer this morning. Do you know Him as your personal Lord and Savior? I hope we can answer yes to that this morning. I hope that we can. I hope that we know Christ as Lord and Savior. If you're here this morning, then you can't answer yes to that. Yes, Jesus Christ is my King. Yes, He is my personal Lord and Savior. If you can answer yes to that, I'm glad that you can. I'm excited that you can. If you can't answer that, I want you to know this morning that He is ready and waiting for you to call on Him for salvation. And all you have to do so, Jesus, I'm ready. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the King of my life. I want you to be my, 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 my Lord and my Savior. If you haven't done that, I want you to do that. I want you to get this right. You know, because next Sunday, next Sunday may be too late. You may be thinking, well, you know, man, next Sunday, that would be the time for me to do this. Easter Sunday, man, that would be a great time to do it. No, now is the time to do it. We don't know we don't know that we'll get up and walk out of that door this morning. I bet you do it, man. If you said yes to that question, if you said yes, I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. How far do you have to look in your life to see somebody that you know that doesn't? We don't have to look too far, do we? We don't have to look too far. Maybe somebody in our own family. Maybe, maybe a, a mom, a dad, a brother, a sister, a neighbor, somebody that would work with you. Whoever it might be. All you got to do is share what Jesus did. 
for you. How he became the Lord and Savior of your life. It is the simplest thing, but it's the most profound thing you'll ever do in your life. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we ask you this morning. Lord, to just allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to our hearts. Lord, if there be one here this morning, Lord, who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, they, uh, they just, uh, Lord, maybe they know it, but they just, uh, maybe they're afraid to, to, to come forward and just uh, make that profession of faith. Father God, I pray that you'll move every obstacle, every, every thing that's scary or maybe embarrassing or whatever it is, Lord God, I pray that you just get all of that out of the way, Lord. And Lord, that they'll just be able to come and have that burden, that burden lifted. And Lord, that we replaced with hope and grace and mercy. Father, for that one that we know in our lives, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Lord God, that you would give us the strength and the courage to share a loving Jesus, a saving Jesus, Lord, that they too might know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, maybe there's one here this morning who just needs to come and just say something at the foot of the cross. There's some burden, some thing that's holding them down and holding them back. Father, I pray that you would give them that freedom this morning to come and lay that down. Lord, that they, uh, Lord, that they would know the, the mercy and grace of the loving Jesus. Lord, we just ask these things in Jesus' name.